let's have a look at this photo. What you see can be described as Jefferson curls, but not by these scientists who did the study, because according to them, it is stiff leg deadlift. Science-based lifting. Have you ever wondered why it has been called like this? What is exactly scientific about this style of training? You know what? Scientific studies that science-based lifters treat as some ultimate universal truth, as some sort of almighty deity. And of course they're gonna tell you something like, it's not like this, we try to be objective. But do you recall the last time when your average science-based lifter used any kind of argument besides isolated studies to prove his point? But what is wrong with them? Long story short, everything. First thing, those studies are usually conducted in not so many people in a very short period of time, which of course will lead to many inaccuracies. Something like building muscles is a process that takes lots of time. So those studies should be conducted at least in like half a year, but rarely do you see such studies. Second thing, which is very important, those studies are in almost 100% of the cases are conducted in whether novice lifters or in worst case scenario, untrained individuals. And why is it so important? Because not everything that works on a novice lifter or an untrained individual will work on intermediate or an advanced lifter, guys. And it was never a question on how to make your novice gains, because you just go to a gym, don't skip training sessions and actually work out instead of like, you know, chit-chatting and you'll make gains. But there is not a problem. The problem is what's gonna happen after you get plateaued and this is what you see in gyms, 95% of the gym population actually not making any gains after they made their novice gains. So the problem is how to make post novice gains without taking steroids, obviously. So none of the studies can theoretically answer this question because they are held in novice lifters or untrained individuals, as I said. But on top of all that, they're not just conducted in untrained individuals, but also by than trade individuals. And this is also really important. Let's have a look at this photo. What you see can be described as Jefferson curls, but not by these scientists who did the study, because according to them, it is stiff leg deadlift. Let's have a look at this photo. What you see according to the study is Romanian deadlift versus Romanian deadlift on a step versus stiff leg deadlift. Actually, this is what was written in the study. They thought that stiff leg deadlift is just a Romanian deadlift with your knees bended less. Like what? If you try to test exercise A versus exercise B, but you don't even know how the exercise B actually looks like, what kind of science are we even talking about? This is just a couple of examples. And there are so many studies that are conducted by just dilettants. Because guys, sport doesn't equal science because sport is just a mastery. And how can you describe music with science, for instance? It's nothing but just physics and mathematics. But if you are a brilliant mathematician and physicist, it doesn't automatically mean that you are a good composer and vice versa. If you are a brilliant linguist, it doesn't mean that you are a polyglot and vice versa. Science is just one of the ways to describe the world around us and sport is just a mastery. So to conduct a study in sports, you have to know something about this sport. But you can say there are some legit scientists who are respected. Okay, let's have a look at this Brad Schoenfeld uh, study. This is a guy who probably did like half of the studies, you know, he's everywhere. So look at this. In his study, he concluded that you can train just 13 minutes three times a week and still make significant gains even if you are intermediate lifter. I guess I'm not gonna even debunk this BS. Theoretically, it is not possible because within 13 minutes, the max you can get is just to finish your warm up. But we're talking about science based lifters, and it seems like they hate the idea of warm up. Look at this study, for instance, where they tried to first estimate one rep max of participants. In brief, participants performed a general warm up consisting of five minutes walk on a treadmill. Okay, nothing wrong with this. This was followed by two specific warm up sets with proper lifting technique. The first set consisted of five repetitions at approximately 50 of the estimated one rep weight. 
A second set of three repetitions with lows corresponded to approximately 60 to 80 percent of the estimated one rep weight was then executed. And after three minutes uh, rest, they hit one rep max. Can you imagine it? I wonder if somebody got injured. Wait a minute. No, 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 hold on. I, uh, I felt something really weird in my knee. Another thing you consider that studies can be biased. And I'm not even talking about payroll, because, yeah, it can be the problem if I want to push some supplements or some kind of machine on the market, you know what I'm saying? But what I'm talking about is some sort of scientific score. Universities try to issue as many PhD holders as possible, as many studies that are done by students or former students having this university as an alma mater. And students and scientists also want to have as many articles as possible, because this will boost their scientific score, guys. So you do understand what this kind of system will lead to. If it follows the idea of seeking the truth, nobody cares. But even if imagine those studies are 100% correct, as we said, they are isolated. And this is the problem not of the studies, but the people who try to refer to those studies as an argument for this exercise, for this exercise, or this training method, this, this training method. The problem is that that is called sophistry. Formally, you are right, but you are wrong. So what I'm talking about? According to the study, exercise A hits your last better than barbell rows. Exercise B hits your rhomboids better than barbell rows. And exercise C hits your traps better than barbell rows. Conclusion. You have to do exercise A, B, C. But it's not taken into consideration that if you do just barbell rows instead, it will hit your named muscle groups equally. And this is what actually Jeff Nippard said in one of his videos. Many people understandably thought that I think you build a bigger back with a one-arm cable pull down than with the barbell row. But I don't think that, and I didn't think that when I made the tier list video. If you were forced to do just one of these exercises for the rest of your life, I would 100% pick the barbell row. What? So you see, this is what happens when you use a formal logic instead of a practical implementation of logic. So now you're probably asking, okay, but if I want to be a science-based lifter, what kind of science should I use? First of all, you gotta change your way of thinking. You gotta create this scientific way of thinking. We're talking about logic, we're talking about dialectics, we're talking about critical thinking and all other methods of thinking, guys, okay? This is the first thing that will be really, really helpful. Second, just basic physics and basic anatomy will be more than enough to protect you from 90% of bullshit that's being promoted. You know, it's like, this exercise hits the long head of the bicep more, but it is not possible according to just simple physics and anatomy, guys. And there are so many things like this. And you don't have to learn some advanced anatomy, because the fact that you learned about some rotatorious muscles won't make your deadlift better. And the third thing, practice. But you gotta be careful with this, because if you're gonna practice of different lifters, you gotta understand that top level, elite level lifters are, first of all, Jews to the gills, and second, they are all genetically gifted outliers. Something that works on them might not work on you, and at the end of the day, you are alone with your decisions, and nobody will tell you how to train better but you, testing many different things and coming up with a style of training that makes you progress. But remember, if something works right now, it doesn't mean that this will 100% work within like five years from this moment. So, in a nutshell, if you train and make progress, you train scientifically. So, guys. Enough said. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.